Hi, thank you for joining this session on quantum computing at AWS. My name is Nadia Carlston. I'm a senior technical product manager in the quantum computing group. And today I want to share with you 10 things that you should know about our quantum computing efforts at Amazon. Some of you may have already started with our quantum computing service, or maybe you know that Amazon is doing something in this space and you're looking to learn more. Either way, you'll learn a couple new things in this session. So let's get started. Almost exactly a year ago today, Amazon announced that we were getting into quantum computing. One of the things that we announced in 2019 was a cloud-based quantum computing service called Amazon Bracket, which at the time was only available to select preview customers. But in August, Amazon Bracket became generally available, meaning anyone can access it and use it. And the great thing about that is that means we've been interacting with a larger set of customers, getting feedback and talking to them about how Amazon Bracket is really helping them to innovate. So I'm going to share some of these learnings with you and what that means for our service and for our vision for quantum. 2020 has been a very busy year for us. We've added several new products just in the last few months. So I'm going to point those out as I go. And I'll also share a couple of exciting announcements with you today. The very first thing that you should know is that we're investing in the long term when it comes to quantum computing. That's important because for quantum computing, time scales are still very long. There are still a lot of unknowns. On the one hand, we know there's a lot of potential for quantum computing that it could be key to really transforming many applications, many industries, but it's not going to happen tomorrow. This is still a very early field. This means that there's still a lot of research that needs to be done and a lot of innovation that will be required. This is why we started the AWS Center for Quantum Computing. This makes it possible to bring together researchers from Amazon along with academic institutions so that they can collaborate and advance the field. The goal of the center is to really push the boundaries, especially focusing on areas of research that will be foundational for quantum computing, like developing more powerful algorithms and models for error correction. The partnership with Caltech was announced late last year and a big milestone happened in August. That's when we broke ground on the building and started construction. Another big milestone is this brand new paper, just hot off the press from our Center for Quantum Computing. And it will be posted on archive as it's submitted for publication. The paper describes a new architecture for a quantum computer based on hybrid electroacoustic qubits. That's a system of acoustic resonators coupled to superconducting circuits for a significantly smaller footprint and also longer coherence times. Now to put this research in context, Remember that what's limiting quantum computing right now is the high error rate of current devices. One way to deal with that is through error correction. So what you do is you redundantly encode information into a protected qubits using more physical qubits. This works, but the downside is for each encoded qubit, you need many physical qubits. And the more you increase that number, the more you also increase things like control lines. So this overhead makes it really hard to physically scale. What the CQC team was able to show here is that by designing fault tolerance schemes that are more efficient, that are tailored to these qubits, it's possible to get more than a 10x improvement in the overhead required. This reduces the number of physical qubits to do something meaningful by a lot. It's a big step towards fault tolerant quantum computing machines that are powerful enough for large-scale practical applications. So now that we've talked about the long-term, I'm going to bring it back to a more immediate time scale. The great thing about working with customers is that they're always asking, what can I do now? They understand that fault-tolerant, large-scale quantum computers are still a ways off, but they still wanna get started so that they can learn about it and so that they can understand the potential for them. That's one of the reasons we launched Amazon Bracket, which is a fully managed service that makes it easier for scientists and developers to explore and experiment with quantum computing. Fully managed means that we take away a lot of the complexity 
so that you can get started quicker. For example, we provide fully managed development environments so that you're not restricted to device-specific frameworks. We also provide managed circuit simulators so that you can test quantum circuits on classical hardware and get the best possible performance, but without having to worry about managing infrastructure yourself. I'll talk more about this. And of course, one of the key features that Amazon Bracket gives you is the ability to run tasks on different types of quantum computers, all from one interface. The goal of making it as easy as possible to get started really drives how we think about the customer experience. So on the right side here, you see a screenshot of the Amazon Bracket Service Console. Customers have the information about different devices right at their fingertips. For example, you can see which ones are currently available or compare technical characteristics of the device. On the left, we have an example of a managed notebook on Amazon Bracket. The great thing about a managed notebook is that once you create it, you have everything you need to get started. You can write a quantum circuit, send a task to different devices, and look at the results. We also have several example notebooks and tutorials, so you can learn how to run very simple circuits or more advanced functionality. We frequently add new ones to GitHub. We just added one showing how to allocate qubits on a device, uh, just as an example. There aren't many quantum computers in the world. So it's really important to lower the barrier for customers. And customers also want to experiment with different quantum computing technologies. With Bracket, you have multiple quantum devices that are available right at your fingertips. And you can switch between them very easily with just one line of code. Through Bracket, you access not just different quantum devices, but different de types of quantum computers altogether. In order to do this, we have partnered with several quantum hardware providers. We are currently working with D-Wave, IonQ, and Rigetti to make it possible for you to access their quantum computers through Amazon Bracket. Customers have access to quantum annealers from D-Wave, a trapped ion quantum computer from IonQ that has 11 fully connected qubits, and a quantum processor from Rigetti that is based on 32 superconducting qubits. And as a customer, that gives you the opportunity to compare different types of quantum computers and make decisions based on what works best for your application. Not all devices are going to be suited to the same problem. They each have different characteristics and different benefits. So it's really pretty powerful to be able to learn about and try the different options. And the selection keeps growing. We've already added a new device since GA. D-Wave launched the Advantage system at the end of September, and we made it available on Bracket the same day. This device is really impressive for quantum annealing. Customers have access to 5,000 qubits. It's very useful for solving optimization and sampling problems. I'm also looking forward to adding more devices in the future. Some of our current providers have already announced new generations of chips. For example, We'll add IonQ's 32 qubit device once it's available. And we're also working with additional providers to continue to expand the selection that is available on Bracket. At AWS, we generally believe that the cloud is a powerful way to bring innovation to customers. And we're taking the same approach to bring quantum computers into the hands of users. We're applying the benefits of the cloud model to quantum computing. When most people think of the cloud, they usually think about two things, on-demand resources and pay-as-you-go pricing. And that's exactly what we're making possible here. Having quantum computers as resources that you can access on-demand is a really powerful thing. It means you're able to get started with no commitment. You don't have to negotiate agreements with different providers. You don't have to make reservations in advance. You don't even have to limit yourself to one type of quantum computer. You just log in, decide what device you want to work with, and get started. And with pay-as-you-go pricing, you can decide how much you want to spend on quantum computing. And you can adjust that as needed because you only pay for what you use. All devices on Bracket have transparent pricing, and our pricing model also makes it very easy for you to plan based on your budget. 
Number five is security. And if you know anything about AWS, you know that security is a top priority. We just talked about enabling customers to get the full benefits of working on the cloud. That includes having the same level of monitoring, security, and data protection that AWS customers are used to. Practically speaking, we've done that by making sure that Amazon Bracket is fully integrated with the full range of AWS capabilities. The way we look at it, quantum machines themselves may be at an early stage, but customers should be able to access them in a reliable way and through an interface that you can trust. You shouldn't have to trade off security just because you want to experiment with new technologies. So Amazon Bracket customers are able to take advantage of AWS services like identity and access management to manage permissions, Amazon CloudWatch for monitoring and notifications, and KMS, our key management service, for additional data protection. We're constantly raising the bar on security, and a few weeks ago, we added support for AWS Private Link, which is a service that provides private connectivity between VPCs and AWS services. That means that if you use it, you can access Amazon Bracket while keeping your network traffic within the AWS network. You don't need to use public IPs. Our customers really like this feature because it allows them to keep the same security experience consistent with the other AWS services. When using Amazon Bracket, you have the choice of running quantum tasks on either quantum processors or quantum circuit simulators. For example, you could use simulators to debug quantum circuits quickly or to optimize your circuit. We make it so that we provide powerful simulators, but we do the heavy lifting on setting up the infrastructure for you. With Bracket, you have multiple ways to go about doing simulation, depending on what you're trying to do. The local simulator allows you to do basic simulations directly in your local environment or in a notebook. This is super useful for doing quick validation of circuit designs. But if you need more performance, you also have access to managed simulators, meaning that Bracket automatically figures out the resources that you need for your simulation. You don't have to set up scientific software or hardware infrastructure yourself. So it makes it super simple for you to get started and get the best performance. SV1 is our state vector simulator. You can use it to run large circuits. And a great thing about it is that it provides predictable execution and high performance for circuits with up to 34 qubits. I'm also happy to announce that we just launched a brand new simulator. This is also fully managed, so you get the same benefits I just mentioned, but this one is based on tensor network algorithms, hence its name TN1. This simulator can support up to 50 qubits. So how does it do it? Most circuits that customers are interested in have some structure. The structure can come from the physical layout of a device or represent structure of the problem itself. TN1 takes advantage of this to find a better way to do the simulation by encoding the quantum circuit into a graph representation. You can think about it as the nodes of the graph are the qubits or gates and the edges of the graph are the connection between the gates. That makes it possible for TN1 to process large and complex circuits. So generally speaking, if your circuit has structure, you should use TN1. You can see here, for example, to simulate a quantum Fourier transform, the runtime is drastically reduced with TN1, especially beyond 30 qubits. Most customers need the combination of classical computing resources with quantum computers. This is really a requirement because we are still in the era of NISC devices, these noisy, imperfect qubits. Hybrid algorithms are a way to address these challenges of NISC devices and still be able to do useful computation in spite of the limitations. In a hybrid algorithm, the quantum computer is used as a coprocessor for a classical computer to speed things up and make circuit executions much shorter. So it works like this. You start with a quantum circuit and make an initial estimate for the parameters that define it. The QPU then executes the circuit and computes an objective function. This is then fed into an optimization routine so that the classical backend optimizes the parameter. You then go back to the QPU again, and this time you run with the new parameters. And you do this several times with many loops going back and forth. And as you keep varying the parameters, 
you get closer to the optimal solution. Now, this is very similar to how you would train a machine learning model by making adjustments and by making several iterations. Penny Lane is an open source software library that really pioneered this concept of taking advantage of machine learning techniques and applying them for quantum computing. The idea with Penny Lane is you can train quantum circuits the same way you would train a neural network. That's why it's great to be able to announce that Amazon Bracket now supports Penny Lane. You can access Penny Lane pre-installed on Bracket notebooks or install the Amazon Bracket Penny Lane plugin. This makes it sit easy to get started with quantum differentiable programming on Amazon Bracket. So if you have a machine learning background, it's really going to help you because you'll have an interface to machine learning libraries like PyTorch, and it will make training your algorithms very intuitive. This functionality also combines really nicely with our bracket managed simulators. So if you use Penny Lane on Amazon Bracket to train these types of quantum programs, by using parallel circuit execution, you can make your training 10 times faster compared with local simulation. With Amazon Bracket, we give customers all the tools they need to explore quantum computing on their own. But if you want to work more closely with us, or if you have specific applications you want to dig deeper into, we also have a professional services program called the Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab. The Quantum Solutions Lab lets you have deeper, longer-term engagements and work directly with experts from Amazon, but also partner companies. This include experts in quantum computing, obviously, but also machine learning and HPC. The team works backwards from the customer's problem, so the solutions don't have to focus only on quantum computing. You could also take advantage of their expertise with classical resources, or you could look at things like quantum-inspired approaches. Some of the ways that you can work with the QSL includes understanding the impact of quantum computing on your business, or identifying some use cases relevant to your industry, or developing a proof of concept to get a jump start on quantum computing. Not all our customers are quantum researchers or physicists. A very important set of customers for us is developers who are building applications that sit on top of or make use of Amazon Bracket. We've been very deliberate about enabling these developers to get in on quantum computing and giving them the right tools so that they don't have to learn everything about the quantum hardware or the infrastructure in order to do something useful with it. Several of our partners are building software solutions on top of Bracket, and we believe it's a great way to deliver useful applications for our customers. QCWare Software Forge, for example, uses Amazon Bracket as a backend to access quantum hardware. Zapata customers also access hardware through Amazon Bracket. And these are just two examples. We're also seeing brand new startups that are building applications on top of Bracket. We also have partners that provide consulting services. These companies have deep expertise and most of them specialize in different application areas like computational chemistry or optimization. It's great to have these companies in our partner network because it helps our customers be successful with quantum computing. Last but certainly not least, you should know that you can get started today. This is a big deal because for all of the interest in quantum, it's still very difficult for people to access quantum resources, especially if you're not one of the few lucky researchers with special access or a big company that can afford an expensive subscription. Right now is the right time for you to get started. And when I say you can get started today, I literally mean today. Anyone with an AWS account can go online and use Amazon Bracket to use a quantum computer or a few quantum computers for the first time. I hope you learned something new today about quantum computing with AWS and that I piqued your interest in giving it a try. I look forward to connecting. Thanks for watching.